When James Leiniger was just two years old, his behavior already seemed strange and frightening to his parents. It took them several years to find the reason for the boy's behavior. And when the reason was found, they couldn't believe it. The only plausible explanation was that the boy is the reincarnation of a fighter pilot who died at the end of World War II. After watching the video, tell us your opinions in the comments. Enjoy. Plane. Plane on fire. These are the screams that came from little James's room and woke up Andrea and Bruce Leiniger almost every night. The parents seriously regretted their visit to the World War II Museum with their two-year-old, although they could not understand why the visit had such a strong influence on him. There was a huge hall full of fighter planes, but there were no scenes of violence, no pictures of disaster. Since the visit, the boy developed a serious interest in airplanes. At night, he began to struggle with nightmares more and more often. It was as if he was desperately trying to get out of some kind of an invisible shell that was squeezing him from all sides. He screamed heart-rendingly, Airplane crash, plane on fire, little man can't get out. The Leinegers family doctor was puzzled. Nightmares and night terrors are common for children, but usually this phase occurs at about four years old. James's nightmares began much earlier and recurred with frightening consistency. The doctor advised the parents not to panic. In case of a night terror, he advised them to take the boy into their arms, to speak with him quietly and gently in order to try and calm him down, as well as to ask him to give detailed descriptions or even draw pictures of his disturbing dreams. Even though James experienced more and more nightmares at night, during the day he gave the impression of being a generally happy and healthy child. This phase, however, lasted only for a limited time. Soon, the strange behaviors also started to occur during the day. One time, Andrea showed her son a model airplane in the window of a toy store and said that there was a bomb under the pilot's cabin. James responded confidently, that's not a bomb, that's a drop tank. When he went on a trip with his parents, the boy amazed Bruce and Andrea by how professionally and confidently he observed the planes standing on the airfield. Bruce said proudly, he's a genius. But Andrea was getting more and more worried. One night, James had a particularly bad attack. It took a long time for the boy to calm down in his mother's arms. Following the doctor's advice, Andrea asked him, who is the man that can't get out? James replied, me. What happened to your plane? It caught fire and fell. Why did it fall? It was hit. How? Who hit you, asked Bruce. The boy looked at him with a puzzled look and said in a matter-of-fact way, the Japanese, of course. Afterwards, he gave a detailed description of Japanese fighter planes during World War II. The boy signed his pictures with James III. Later, in a list of pilots who died on March 3, 1945, Bruce discovered the name James Houston Jr., James II. James's maternal grandmother was the first to have the courage to voice her opinion. Maybe the Leiniger family is facing a case of reincarnation. The parents were categorically opposed to this line of thought, and it even made Bruce seriously angry. As a Christian and a rational thinker who worked as a director of human resources at an oil company, he did not want to hear about what he considered to be stupid superstitions. He said that tales of a previous life offended rational thought. He did not give up on finding a rational explanation for his son's behavior. In order to achieve this, he began to ask the boy more detailed questions. Do you remember the type of plane that the little man flew? Corsair, answered James without hesitation. Where did it take off from? A ship called the Natoma. Bruce began researching the internet and soon found out that an American aircraft carrier called the Natoma Bay was used to transport coarse airplanes during the war. Intrigued by the coincidence of those two details, Bruce continued to have conversations with his son. Under the guise of a historian writing a book, Bruce Leiniger went to a meeting of the Natoma Bay veterans. It turned out that absolutely all details that he heard from his son were true. These included the names of technical flight elements, nicknames of combat aircrafts, and the location of their last battle in 1945, which the boy recognized in a picture. 
At that point, Andrea too was convinced that the soul of the slain fighter pilot chose their son to return to this world. Bruce, however, continued to fight against superstition. He was set on catching his son in a mistake in order to prove that the whole story of a fighter pilot was the product of the boy's imagination and coincidences that were amazing and unbelievable, but coincidences nevertheless. Do you know if the man from the plane had any friends? Yes, he had a friend named Jack Larson. The father was convinced that the mystery would be resolved when it would become clear that there was no Jack Larson. But that was not the case. Not only did Jack Larson exist and was a fighter pilot during World War II, but he was still alive. Bruce spared no time or money in locating the veteran. He went to him with a list of descriptions that his son gave to him about his service in the U.S. Air Force. Larson confirmed each and every detail. At that point, Bruce was ready to believe in any explanation. He studied his son's drawings for hours. In one picture, the boy clumsily drew a burning plane, which no longer surprised Bruce. However, what surprised him was the boy's signature, which read, To Dad, from James III. Why the third? There was no James Sr. or James Jr. in the Leininger family. James Huston was a fighter pilot whose plane was hit in 1945. When Andrea took over the initiative, she turned to a psychotherapist named Carol Bowman, who was the author of a best-selling book on the manifestation of reincarnations in the behavior of children. Bowman investigated dozens of children who were suffering from painful memories of past lives. She told Bruce and Andrea that their son was not unique and that such vivid manifestations of reincarnation usually occur in instances of violent deaths. Her take on the situation was that the soul was so saturated with past trauma that it couldn't rid itself of it even as it entered into the other world. This explanation no longer seemed strange to Bruce and Andrea. The psychotherapist advised for the parents to speak to the pilot directly when they were comforting their son because the pilot still lived within the boy. They should ask James to recall his nightmares as if they were actual memories, not dreams. The boy's night terrors really did become less severe. The boy woke up screaming and crying less frequently, while Bruce continued to study the history of the Natoma Bay and the list of slain pilots. One day, the final piece of the incredible puzzle was found. On a list of pilots who were hit on March 3, 1945, was the name of James Huston Jr. In parentheses, it said, James II. If all of this was true, it made sense that little James thought of himself as James III. In 2004, when James Leininger was six years old, his story was featured on the front pages of major newspapers and gathered a huge audience on primetime on ABC. One of the most fascinating scenes was the Leininger's family visit to Anne Barron, the sister of the late James Huston Jr. With difficulty to find the right words and tears in her eyes, she confirmed that the boy told her a lot of things that were known only to her and her brother who passed away a long time ago. Anne Barron questioned how it is possible not to believe in other worlds and reincarnation after a story like this. Members of the Skeptic Society, which actively fights against mysticism and the occult, took it upon themselves to refute the story of James Leininger. They said that Bruce and Andrea more or less consciously created a family saga in order to rid themselves of feelings of guilt associated with their son's nightmares that were brought on by their visit to the military museum, and also to attract attention to themselves. It is worth saying, however, that their rational arguments did not sound too convincing this time around. Carol Bowman, on the other hand, explained that memories from past lives are like regular memories. Events, places, and objects can force images or sensations from the past to re-emerge. This is what happened at the museum. Contact with familiar objects is even a part of a Buddhist ceremony, the purpose of which is to recognize reincarnated lamas. The claims of the family saga built on coincidences would have been more convincing if they were talking about a few words said by a child accidentally. But in James's case, we're talking about over a hundred pieces of evidence, the truth of which was confirmed by careful verification. Today, James is a 17-year-old who leads the life of a typical young man. He is no longer troubled by nightmares. Memories from his past life stopped appearing to him ever since he and his parents went to say goodbye to the deceased pilot. He said a prayer and dropped a bouquet of flowers in the ocean off the coast of Japan, where 75 years ago on March 3, 1945, the plane of James Huston Jr. caught fire and crashed.